Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Saira Mujtaba and with me is Prashant Kumar Sinha with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs meeting with top government officials on COVID-19 situation amidst concerns over new coronavirus variant Omicron. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts with the people in his Mon Ki Baat program tomorrow. President Ramnath Govind says justice gets strengthened if judiciary, legislature and executive are in harmonious existence. Winter session of parliament to begin from Monday. Farm Laws Repeal Bill 2021 to be introduced in Lok Sabha on the first day. More than 121 crore 6 lakh covid vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu calls for rethinking construction approach of houses to ensure proper air circulation and sunlight. Delhi government bans entry of trucks in the national capital except those carrying essential commodities till 30th of November. National Organ Donation Day is being observed today. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya stresses on generating comprehensive public awareness for organ donation in the country. In Indonesia Open Badminton, PV Sindhu bows out losing to Rachana King Chanon in the semi-final. As India created history by administering over 100 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, All India Radio salutes all doctors, nurses, frontline workers and all those who got vaccinated and made this possible. Even though the country has achieved this feat, we caution our listeners that the battle against COVID is not yet over. We appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated. Please continue following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 0112397846 and 1075 and now the news in detail Prime Minister Narendra Modi is chairing a meeting with top government officials on the covid-19 situation and vaccination in New Delhi Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gauba, Principal Secretary to Prime Minister V K Mishra, Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan and Niti Aayog Member Health Dr V K Paul are among the attendees. The meeting assumes significance in the wake of rising concerns over a new COVID variant Omicron, first detected in South Africa. India has added several countries to the list from where travelers will be required to follow additional measures on arrival in India, including post arrival testing for infection. Some other countries in the list include South Africa, Brazil, Bangladesh, Botswana, China, Mauritius, New Zealand, Zimbabwe, Singapore and UK. The center had on Thursday cautioned states and union territories against the new variant and asked them to conduct rigorous screening and testing of all international travelers coming from or transiting through South Africa, Hong Kong and Botswana. The discovery of a new coronavirus variant has triggered global alarm as countries rush to impose travel restrictions on southern african countries. The B11529 variant was first detected in South Africa, but cases have been confirmed in Botswana, Belgium, Israel and Hong Kong so far. The World Health Organization has designated the new highly mutated strain of covid a variant of concern and given it the Greek name Omicron. A WHO panel classified it as a highly transmissible virus of concern, the same category that includes the Delta variant. In response, the US, Canada, UK, Israel, Japan, Kenya and Singapore joined the European Union and several other countries in instituting travel restrictions on visitors from southern African countries. The 27 nation European Union imposed a temporary ban on air travel from the southern African countries. More than 121 crore 6 lakh covid vaccine doses have been administered in the country under the nationwide vaccination drive so far the health ministry said more than 73 lakh 58000 doses were administered in the previous 24 hours in the same period 8318 new cases were reported the active case load in the country stands at 1 lakh 7019 The recovery rate is currently at 98.34%, the highest since March of 2020. A total of 10,967 people recovered in the past 24 hours. 
the health ministry said the weekly positivity rate currently stands at 0.88%, which is less than 1% for the last 13 days. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people of the country and abroad in the Monkey Bar program on All India Radio tomorrow. The 83rd episode of the monthly radio program will be broadcast on the entire network of AIR and Doodarshan, AIR News website and news on AIR mobile app. It will also be streamed live on the YouTube channels of AIR News, DD News, PMO and the Information and Broadcasting Ministry. AIR will broadcast the program in regional languages immediately after the Hindi broadcast. The regional language versions will also be repeated at 8 p.m. President Ram Nath Kovind today said that justice gets further strengthened if the three institutions of the state, namely judiciary, legislature and executive, are in harmonious existence. He was addressing the validatory function of the 72nd Constitution Day celebrations organized by the Supreme Court of India. As we are celebrating the 75th year of independence as Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, such deliberations on holding fast to constitutional norms and values are an ongoing project. The Constitution is the roadmap of our collective journey. At the core of it are justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. Justice is the critical fulcrum around which democracy revolves. It is indeed a credible achievement that people repose faith in the judiciary. And the Indian judiciary must be complimented for this well-earned achievement. The President said that it is incumbent on the judges to exercise utmost discretion in their utterances in the courtrooms. He said that indiscreet remarks, even if made with good intention, give a space for dubious interpretations to run down the judiciary. Mr. Govind hoped to see increased access to legal aid and advisory services for all. He said that it can take the form of a movement or a better institutionalized mechanism. Winter session of Parliament will begin from Monday, that is 29th of November. Farm Laws Repeal Bill 2021 has been listed for introduction in Lok Sabha on the first day of the session. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had announced recently that the government has decided to repeal all the three farm laws. The bill will repeal the Farmers Empowerment and Protection Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Services Act 2020, the Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Promotion and Facilitation Act 2020, the Essential Commodities Amendment Act 2020, and to amend the Essential Commodities Act 1955. BJP has already issued a whip to its members in Rajya Sabha to remain present in the House to support the government. Union Minister of State for Social Justice Ramdas Atwale said that since the Union Government has decided to repeal all three farm laws, the farmers should withdraw their agitation. Talking to reporters at Sangli in Maharashtra, he said, if the agitation is not withdrawn, strict action will have to be taken against farmer leaders and agitators. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs meeting with top government officials on COVID-19 situation amidst concerns over new coronavirus variant Omicron. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts with the people in his Monkey Path program tomorrow. President Ramnath Kovind says justice gets strengthened if judiciary, legislature and executive are in harmonious existence. Winter session of parliament to begin from Monday. Farm laws repeal bill 2021 to be introduced in the Lok Sabha on the first day. More than 121 crore 6 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Vice President M. Benkaya Naidu calls for rethinking construction approach of houses to ensure proper air circulation and sunlight. Delhi government bans entry of trucks in the national capital except those carrying essential commodities till the 30th of November. National Organ Donation Day is being observed today. Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia stresses on generating comprehensive public awareness for organ donation in the country. In Indonesia Open, badminton PV Sindhu bows out, losing to Ratchok, Ratchanok in Tanon in the semi-final. And in Kanpur Cricket Test, New Zealand trailed India by 101 runs on day three when reports last came in. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts.
आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार वेलकम बैक लिसनिंग टू द मिड डे न्यूज वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एम वेंकैया नायडू टूडे कॉल फॉर रीथिंकिंग द प्लानिंग एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन अप्रोच ऑफ हाउसेज to ensure proper air circulation and sunlight in indoor spaces he was speaking after inaugurating the second annual international conference on interventional pulmonology bronchus 2021 virtually from his residence in new delhi the pandemic gave a timely reminder that the quality of air we breathe also determines our health and well-being especially in indoor spaces this has highlighted the importance of having air circulation Research suggests that the airborne transmission of virus produced by even normal breathing or talking can stay suspended in the air for hours. Thus, crowded spaces with poor ventilation can pose high infection risk to individuals exposed to the stagnant air. The vice president remarked that there has to be greater public outreach both by the government and the civic society on lung and throat cancer caused by the use of tobacco. Mr Naidu also expressed concern about the deteriorating outdoor air quality in major cities especially during the winter months. He also called upon the people to evaluate one's lifestyle and try to reduce their carbon footprint to the maximum extent possible. Delhi's Department of Environment and Forest has issued an order banning entry of trucks in the national capital except those carrying essential commodities from today till the 30th of November CNG and electric trucks carrying non-essential commodities have been allowed to enter Delhi the air quality in the national capital is presently in the severe category according to the central pollution control board the overall air quality index AQI of the national capital was recorded at 405 today and AQI between 0 and 50 is considered good between 51 and 100 is considered satisfactory 101 and 200 ranges in moderate 201 to 300 is poor 301 to 401 to 400 very poor and 401 to 500 is severe category Health Minister Mansukh Mandaviya has stressed the need for generating comprehensive public awareness for organ donation in the country. He said doing so can reduce the gap between organ requirement and organ donation. He was addressing the 12th Indian Organ Donation Day organized by the National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization NOTTO in New Delhi today. He said public participation and the human Indian philosophy of charity hold the key for taking organ donation to the next level desh mein kaam bahut gati se aage badh sakta hai kyunki ye hamari moolata bhavna se susangat hai hamara culture se susangat hai hamari samajik vyavastha se susangat hai hamare yahan dusre ko madad karna ye hamara swabhav mein hota hai aur is tarah se organ donation mein abhi jo jis parivar ne apne family ke koi member gawaye hai lekin bhi उन्होंने अपना हौसला बुलंद रख के और कर्म डोनेट करने का फैसला लिया जिसको हमने प्रोत्साहित किया Minister of State for Health Dr Bharati Pawar said under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and with the constant efforts of the center organ donation in the country has increased from 5000 in 2013 to 12000 till now which is commendable National Organ Donation Day observed on this day every year since 2010 to spread awareness among people and to recognize the selfless efforts made towards mankind and re-establish belief in humanity. We present a desk report on organ donation scenario in India. In India, organ donation has always been on a small scale. As per estimates, only 0.65 organ donations per million population take place in the country. There has been a considerable decline in organ donation in India as well as the entire world due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are only 3% registered organ donors in India. As per the 2019 data of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, annually 1.5 to 2 lakh people require a kidney transplant, but only around 8000, meaning 4% people get it. Similarly, around 1 lakh patients require corneal or eye transplants annually but less than half of the people get it even for a heart transplant of the 10000 who need a heart transplant only 200 match with donors 
the main reason behind such less organ donation is the lack of knowledge among people regarding the process of organ transplantation ravi kumar air news delhi karnataka chief minister basavaraj bommai has called a meeting of covid experts health department and disaster management officials to discuss two covid super spreader incidents reported in the state speaking to media persons the chief minister said that precautionary measures will be taken after consulting the experts to prevent the spread of coronavirus more details from our correspondent the pandemic situation in karnataka was stable with daily covid positive cases remaining below 300 for a month but two super spreader incidents in bengaluru and another in dharwad have sounded the alarm bells in sdm medical college in dharwad the number of covid positive cases has increased from 182 yesterday to 281 today another 1822 test results are being awaited out of 281 incidents of covid cases only 6 have mild symptoms and others have no symptoms of the viral infection. section beat in another super spreader incident in bengaluru 34 students in a private school hostel have tested positive with covid virus all the 34 students who were tested positive are asymptomatic sudhindra air news bengaluru as our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence a series of events is being organized by the government as part of azadi ka amrit mahotsav to commemorate the occasion as a jan utsav All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News and will continue till 15th August 2022. Celebrate 75 years of India's independence by participating in Amrit Mahotsav quiz with AIR News. And now let's listen to our special program Azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव आजादी का सफर विद ए आई आर न्यूज बर्थ ऑफ अ नेशन इंडिया ग्लोरियस फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट स्ट्रगल द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड इज एवर विटनेस्ड ए आई आर न्यूज ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ दिस स्ट्रगल एवरी डे In today's episode, we remember freedom fighter and first speaker of Lok Sabha, Ganesh Mavalankar, who was born on 27th of November 1888. As speaker of the first Lok Sabha of a newborn nation, Mavalankar's role was not merely that of a moderator and facilitator of its proceedings, but of a statesman. and a founding father invested with the responsibility to establish rules procedures conventions and customs that suited the ethos of india born in baroda gujarat mavlankar was a lawyer by profession and also took keen interest in social work which brought him in contact with eminent national leaders like sardar vallabhbhai patel and mahatma gandhi he played an active role in the freedom movement in gujarat and was imprisoned several times and spent nearly 6 years in jail mavalankar dedicated himself to the affairs of ahmedabad municipality for nearly 2 decades and was elected to the then Bombay Legislative Assembly representing the city of Ahmedabad in 1937 he was elected to preside over the central legislative assembly in 1946 Mavalankar was elected to the office of speaker of the constituent assembly legislative on the 17th of November 1947 and with the adoption of the constitution of free india on the 26th of november 1949 mavalankar became the speaker of the provisional parliament and continued to occupy the office of the speaker till the first lok sabha was constituted in 1952 during this time mavalankar ensured that all the rules practices procedures and conventions necessary for the smooth functioning of a representative parliament in the country were put in place before the elections to the first lok sabha were completed in the country in 1951-52 no one was therefore surprised when mavlankar was chosen as a speaker 
of the first Lok Sabha of independent India on 15th of May 1952. During his tenure as a Speaker of Lok Sabha, Mavalankar introduced several new rules and procedures and also modified the existing ones to suit the new conditions. On his initiative, the question hour became a regular and meaningful feature of parliamentary sessions. Devices like short notice questions and half an hour discussions were introduced to make the government truly accountable to the parliament. The discussion on President's address on a motion of thanks was started by him to ensure independence and supremacy of parliament in the system of government. Mavalankar envisioned an independent secretariat of parliament directly under the control of the presiding officer. Mavalankar's speakership was cut short abruptly by his untimely death on the 27th of February 1956 in Ahmedabad. Through five decades of selfless service, Ganesh Vasudev Mavalankar has left a deep imprint of his personality on the office of the Speaker and on the Parliament of India. We salute this great Indian. Today, we also remember renowned Hindi poet Harivan Shurai Bachchan, who was born on 27th of November 1907. Father of legendary actor Amitabh Bachchan, Harivan Shrai grew up during a time when India was striving for its freedom against British imperialism and was influenced by the Gandhian philosophy of non-violence. Let us remember him through his poem, Azadi Ke Geet, dedicated to India's independence on 15th of August 1947. <laughs> चांदी सोने हीरे मोती से सस्ती गुड़िया इनसे आतंकित करने की बीत गई घड़िया इनसे सजधज बैठा करते जो है कठपुतले हमने तोड़ अभी फेंकी है बेड़ी हथकड़िया परंपरागत पुरखों की हमने जागृत की फिर से उठा शीश पर रखा हमने हिम किरीट उज्जवल हम ऐसे आजाद हमारा ठंडा है बादन that brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alert. Best wishes to all consumers for Asadika Amrit Mahotsav. Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmarked Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404, issued in public interest by Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak Jago. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin accompanied by senior colleagues of the State Cabinet met Governor R.N. Ravi today. During the meeting, the Chief Minister appealed to the Governor to send the draft bill for undergraduate medical education passed by the State Assembly for the President's approval. The draft bill is based on the recommendations of the A.K. Rajan Committee report, which recommends undergraduate medical education on the basis of higher secondary marks. The bill was passed by the State Assembly on the 13th of September this year. The International Film Festival of India has been one of the most significant film festivals in Asia for the past 50 years. The 52nd edition this year has a mega lineup of star-studded movie extravaganza. Our correspondent reports that the first screening of the day was the Russian movie Dia de los Muertos by Viktor Rizakov.
The day here at Panjim started bright and sunny and got brighter with every passing event of the day. From script writing in classes to premieres in theatres, the day has it all. Indian Panorama's non-feature segment included surmounting challenges and jugalbandi, while Marathi movies Funeral and Nivas were the highlight of the feature section. Classic movies such as Sandhya Rag, Chandralekha, Kabuliwala, Sri Charsobis and Sujata are featuring as part of India at 75 category today. Sujata depicts the story of an untouchable also renowned filmmaker Martin Scorsese his 1976 masterpiece Taxi Driver is currently running at IFE. 2015 Golden Peacock Award winning movie Embrace of the Serpent was also shown while debut movie of the director Simon Farrell, Wealth of the World was also screened. Aarti Rana, AIR News, IFE Desk. In Kerala, an impressive parade by cadets marked the passing out ceremony held at the Indian Naval Academy at Erimala in Kannu district this morning. In all, 231 cadets, including 28 women, participated in the spectacular event. Defence Minister of Maldives, Maria Ahmadidi, reviewed the parade and distributed medals and trophies. In Madhya Pradesh, the Kranti Surya Gaurav Kalash Yatra is being launched from the birthplace of freedom fighter Jananayak Tatya Mama Basur, a heer village of Tehsil Pandhana in Khandwa district today. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Johan has called upon the citizens to participate in this yadra and pay obeisance to Tantya Mama. In the Indonesia Open Badminton, reigning world champion P.V. Sindhu bowed out of the tournament after going down to second-seeded Richanok in Chanon of Thailand in the women's singles semi-final 21-15, 9-21, 14-21. In the men's doubles event, Indian pair of Satvik Sairaj and Chirag Shetty will meet top-seed Indonesian pair of Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamoljo later in the day. The Indian pair moved into the semi finals beating Malaysian duo Go Si Fei and Noor Izzuddin 21-19, 21-19. In the Kanpur Cricket Test, New Zealand were 249 for the loss of six wickets at T in their first innings. They are trailing India by 96 runs. The visitors resumed their first innings from the overnight score of 129 for no loss against India this morning on day three at Green Park Stadium. For the Kiwis, Tom Latham scored 95 runs, while Will Young hit 89 runs. Earlier yesterday, India posted 345 runs in the first innings. And now let's take a look at the weather update for the day. National capital Delhi is expected to have a mainly clear sky with mist. It recorded a minimum temperature of 11, while maximum will be around 27 degrees Celsius. Mumbai is likely to have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 24 and 33 degrees Celsius. Chennai is likely to have heavy rain today. Temperature will vary between 24 and 28 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a mainly clear sky. Temperature will hover between 19 and 29 degrees Celsius. While Srinagar will have a partly cloudy sky. Vishakhapatnam will have a generally cloudy sky with haze. Hyderabad temperature will hover between 16 and 30 with partly cloudy sky with haze. Guwahati will have fog or mist in the morning and mainly clear sky later, while Itanagar will have a mainly clear sky and temperature will hover between 12 and 29 degrees Celsius. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Modi chairs meeting with top government officials on COVID-19 situation amidst concerns over new coronavirus variant Omicron. Prime Minister Modi to share his thoughts with the people in his Man Ki Baat program tomorrow. President Ramnath Govind says, Justice gets strengthened if judiciary, legislature and executive are in harmonious existence. Winter session of parliament to begin from Monday. Farm laws repeal bill 2021 to be introduced in Lok Sabha on the first day. More than 121 crore 6 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Vice President M. Venkai Naidu calls for rethinking construction approach of houses to ensure proper air circulation and sunlight. Delhi government bans entry of trucks in the national capital except those carrying essential commodities till 30th of November. National Organ Donation Day is being observed today. Health Minister Mansukh Mandviya stresses on generating comprehensive public awareness for organ donation. 
In Indonesia Open Badminton, PV Sindhu bows out, losing to Rachanok in Chanon in semi-final. And in Kanpur Cricket Test, New Zealand trail India by 96 runs on day 3 when reports last came in. And with that, we end the midday news.